All right, let's talk about flounder. One of my favorite things to fish for, my favorite fish to fish for, it really is. Uh, I'm not sure why, I just really enjoy catching them. I get more excited, and most people will, you get more excited about a 20 inch flounder than you will a 20 inch red. So, pound for pound, inch for inch, my favorite fish to catch. During this time of year, you have what is called the flounder run. Or right, we're get, getting close to the flounder run. Yes, this flounder season, uh, this flounder run, the actual run part of the flounder season is actually closed. So we won't be able to harvest or keep any flounder. So that's why it's important for you to be ahead of the curve. Like right now, right now is a great time to go flounder fishing. It's just before the run. And I'm going to talk to you about a couple different things. I'm going to talk to you about... When do flounder run? Where can they be caught? And what bait to use? One of the things that you have to understand is that flounder will migrate and move out of the marsh areas, the passes, the bays. Actually, they move out of the marsh areas and the bays and move into the passes into more open water. What makes them run is actually cold fronts. Every single time that we get a cold front, you're going to have a big push of flounder that move through the area that kind of get off their butt a little bit they can feel that winter is coming and they got to get offshore they got to get off into the gulf so after you have a cold front a or arctic blast a cold front the low pressure system that moves through you get the the heavy winds you get the rain you get miserable and nasty conditions well that when that's when the flounder bite is best it takes a lot of energy for them to make that big push. They travel for miles and miles, and that's where we meet them. While they're feeding, while they're active, while they're moving through, we have the opportunity to, to fish for them and catch them. And it's pretty easy, and it's a lot of fun. She got him now. We got him. Double oh, up. We got a double. Oh, come on. Oh, look at double him. Double up. Beautiful. <laughs> Woo! 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 No, it's triple. <laughs> There's another one in there. <laughs> I can't flip him. I can't no. flip him. There you go. <laughs> Woo! Woo! We got a boat. <laughs> Miss Barry. Look at that. Look at that. Ah, oh, Bob is very, yeah. Look at that. That's a beautiful Look sight. That. Look at that. They're fighting. Ah, oh, they're fighting. Oh, God. That's pregnant. Pregnant. Now, where do you catch them? All year long around any structure. Bulkheads, rocks, posts, pylons. I mean, even around piers. They'll just bump their nose against the posts and they'll kind of hang out there. Drop-offs, any kind of drop-off or cut or, or deep hole, that offers structure to them. They're ambush predator. Grass lines, I mean really any and everywhere that there's going to be structure, you're most likely going to find a flounder. But they, like I said, they are en route to offshore. They're en route to the open waters. There's a lot of areas where you can target them and as they funnel and try to get out into open water, like here in the Galveston area. So here in the Galveston area, you can see that there's really one major access to the open water. And that's right between Galveston Island and Bolivar Island. You have the intercoastal, the ship channel, if you will, and all the flounder from 
East Bay, West Bay, all these marsh areas, they're all going to come out and funnel through here. Now a little further south in San Luis Pass, you have another access point where, again, all the Flounder Christmas Bay, Chocolate Bayou, this side of West Bay, they're going to funnel out and come through San Luis Pass. And this is true all along the Texas coast and in Louisiana. So some of the key areas that anglers do set up and fish and try to harvest flounder is along the Texas City Dyke, Seawolf Park, anywhere in the channel where you have the ferry and Seawolf Park, all along the east end of Galveston, South Jetty, North Jetty, and all along the shoreline of Bolivar Island. You have Skyline Drive all along the Texas City Dyke, the tip of Texas City Dyke, and all along this side of Texas City Dyke. Seawall Park on both sides. Also, you can wade fish and walk in in the ferry landing right here in this ferry landing area. And like I said, all along the east end. South Jetty, Wade Fishing, South Jetty, Rock Fishing, North Jetty area, Wade Fishing, and Rock Fishing. And just any and everywhere where you can find structure, you're going to find flounder. Any of the bulkheads, any of this area that you can get into with your boats, you're going to find them. As they run through and move and exit the West Bay, they will come through here and then go out to open water. What you simply have to do is be at the right place at the right time. And like I said before, cold front, a cold front will trigger that flounder bite. They will trigger that surge of flounder. Sometime we will see flounder just move in huge groups. And then it may be slow for a day or two. And then you'll see another huge group come through and it may be slow for a day or two. Some flounder seasons, we see flounder move through. Just even, just a nice steady flow of flounder just moving through the area. We're not catching huge number. We're not catching 100 flounder a day on situ in cases like this. But you're just a nice even flow. Never a big, big surge, but just a steady flow of flounder running through. Just enough to keep us active and enough to have fun in catching them. So what do you use for bait? Well, you're going to see tr even the bait shops are going to tr start transitioning a little more. And they're going to be start carrying more live mullet and more mud minnows. Now you can fish with live mullet, mud minnows on a Carolina rig. You can use a kale hook, circle hook, treble hook. Um, it's really up to the angler's discretion what they like to use. I prefer kind of like a J hook or octopus hook. But it's really up to you what you like to use. I like to try to stick around anywhere from a size 1 to a size 2. And it's just to me, when it comes to the flounder uh, bite, their structure, I try to stay away from a circle hook or anything too enclosed because you want something that's going to stick out just a little bit more so you can penetrate that jaw because flounder have very hard jaw bones. So you want to penetrate that jaw. Now my lure of choice is gulp. I, I really like gope. I know I know gope gets a bad rap a lot of the times from a lot of anglers, but it is really the most effective lure out there on the market in my mind when you are fishing for flounder. You that you can fish with the swim mullet. Swim mullet is a classic. My favorite is the shrimp, the mantis shrimp style. You and you also have the normal shrimp style. Now a lot of times you do have undesirable fish that will pick off your tails and rip your, your tail off on your gulp. So that's can, that can be a little frustrating. But in my mind, nothing else compares to using a gulp and having that on as far as your bite ratio and your hookup ratio goes. Another great lure to use is also voodoo shrimp. Voodoo shrimp is also a very effective lure to use when you are fishing for flounder. Just remember, stay around structure, pitch, cast, 
have a good time don't wait to set that hook set that hook um, you feel that thump raise your rod tip just a little bit you can feel if it's heavy it's probably a flounder so reel your rod tip down and then set that hook you want to set your hook while it's in the flounder's mouth you don't want to wait and let them take it down in their stomach that's how we gut hook flounder that's how they die and that's how we harm them so set the hook while pretty relatively quick no need to do 20 second countdown 30 second countdown i made that mistake in the past but you live you live you learn so set that hook early and get it in the jaw line they're much easier to de-hook and take off and then if it's a uh, keeper or a slot that you're looking for then put it on your stringer put it in your live well and then if it's small and undesirable no harm no foul we just release them and they go on their way but hey, I hope you enjoyed this content. I love talking about fishing. I love talking about flounder. If you have any additional questions, additional comments, then leave them in the section below. And perhaps maybe you have a lure that you like best, or perhaps maybe you have a question. Um, so don't hesitate. Leave it in the comment section below. And hopefully myself or maybe another viewer might be able to help you and answer that for you. But until next time, I hope you catch me hooking up. Thanks. Nice.